BRSA podcast. I'm Adam Hunter. I'm joined by Kevin Haynes. Hi, Kev. How are you? Very well, Adam. I am. You? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much. It's been a while since our, our last game. How have you been feeling you Saturday afternoons? Um, I've got everything. Um, I've got a panel on. I've got the panel on in the wall. Looks good, like. Um, I would, that was one Saturday. Um, we've done the usual, just out walking and time with the family. But my wife's my wife's working most Saturdays, so you know it's, it's nice just to be kind of a bit time with the girls and myself. Um, although there's, there's not much we can do, but you know it's just spending that time with them. So it's it's been good. It's been different. Um, ready to go back to football though. He's still been homeschooling as well. Yes. Um, Monday. Monday, the, the youngest one goes back this Monday. And then my eldest, she she's Thursday or something like that, later on in the week. How is it working? Are they testing them in school or what's happening there? Um, well, my oldest, she's, doing her, she's in her last year of high school. Right. So she's, she's doing her hires and she needs specific grades for university. Oh okay. So she's had a she's had a conditional offer. Okay. Oh, so she really needs to she really needs to get a a, a specific result. Um, but there's no exams, so they've done prelim exams and just before the lockdown in December, mm-hmm. and then the rest of the mark will go on her coursework. So uh, she needs to do all the coursework and all the assignments, and she'll get graded on that. Obviously, missing the football on a a weekend um it must be strange because usually you be <clears throat> either at a game or going to see a game on a saturday but it's not just that you've got the tuesday and thursday as well that that you've been missing out on it is it's um i've never ever had a i've never had a season out football since I, since i started as a kid um you know five six seven year old and um, so it's been constant um, and the, obviously, the, with the last lockdown and, and this lockdown, it's, a, it's the biggest period that I've never been involved in football effectively. I'm involved, but not involved, if you know what I mean. Um, and it is, it's, it's quite odd. It's quite surreal. From a, a Berwick perspective, what what sort of involvement have you had during the, the lockdown? It's, uh, we know we'll get on to the fact that we've... Um, got new contracts that have gone out and, and new deals. Um, has it been a case where you've been watching games back or anything like that? Um, yeah, there's there's games that we, you know, you, you, you probably watch opposition players and opposition teams and taking every opportunity now to, to catch up on that stuff. Um, you know, we, we know most players in our league and we know um, probably most players logistically and, and what is a you know, a real option for us. Um, you know, so we do a homework that way uh, by watching games. Um, I've watched a couple of other games back um, for, for no apparent reason other than boredom. Um, you know, there's nothing in there's nothing in the other games that, you know, I don't already know or, or I've not seen already, do you know what I mean? So, there's no, there's no a great deal of what's, a great deal of purpose of watching other games, but certainly other teams and other um, matches it's, it's been worthwhile like that Yeah so uh, talking of, of opposition players obviously um, one of the teams that you would have watched was Gala um, and we announced last week the sign of uh, Scott Taylor McKenzie on a, a pre-contract um, to be completed in the summer I think you tried to sign him last summer didn't you? Yeah yeah. Scott is a is a player that that I've known obviously through the juniors and the, the East of Scotland stuff um, for a few years. Um, Yano, Yano got one day and got a few good reports, and then obviously we watched him last season and we come against the played up against them last season, and he, he's he's got something I think that that we've not quite got in the squad. Um, he's got that wee bit devilment, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I think I don't I don't think we've got that. A bit nastiness know. sort of thing. Aye, aye, I don't know if nastiness is probably, it's probably not a nice word, but it's... it's uh, Sorry, Scott. <laughs> a, wee bit, a wee bit devil, man. He's a wee bit hot-headed and um, surprised to know, but I get all that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I 
Um, I understand all that stuff and, and what it, what it brings, and you know, and, and probably how he how he ticks or how he feels um, in certain situations. So he's, I think he's something that we've that we really really need. Um, first and foremost, he's a really good football player. Um, you know, he passes the ball really well, and know that we need another left-footed set piece specialist. Um, but you know, we've got one. Yeah, I saw one of his free kicks um, during the during the week. Um, I think we we'll posted it as as part of the um, press release for his signing. Uh, uh, the, the one against Bonnie, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like I'm saying, he's, he's he's very talented. Um, you know, he's he's played at good levels and he's had good clubs and um, he's a good football player. So that signing was was announced among um, other re-signings um, within the squad. So you're starting to see that take a little bit of shape ahead of next year or ahead of next season. Uh, how happy are you with the business that you've done so far? Really happy. Um, obviously, you know, the, the unprecedented times that we're in um, and the, the, the funds that the club can generate, or, or at the minute, can't generate, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and we've managed to to secure players down, a lot of them for two years, <laughs> um, which is a, a massive compliment to the club that a player's willing to stay for two years. And I just feel like it's great for the club to, to put that trust in the player. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, Jan and I speak about it all the time, but the, the teams that Taking away East Cole Bride at our league, but the, 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 the more successful teams in our league, they've been together four and five years. Mm-hmm. So if we can get to that level where we've got a you know a squad that that maybe rotates two or three players every summer, mm-hmm. other than you know 10 and 11. Um, so that that's that's the idea behind it. Um, you know, it's a bit a bit of security for the players, it's a bit of security for the club that we've got these players and if Yano and I are there next year then it, it makes our job slightly easier because half the squad signed <laughs> or, whoever, or whoever's there do you know what I mean it might not be Yano and I but whoever's there it's it's then that they've got a you know a core um, to start their work yeah because obviously you signed the two year deal at the start of last summer um, so you'd be going at the uh, last year of your contract yeah do you think you approach the second year any differently as you would the first? Um, I don't know. I think I think that if we're talking about the, the first year of this most recent two-year deal, so effectively it's going to be three years. Ah, um, oh, of course, yeah. Because it was really good um, Yeah. The end of last season, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, obviously, what we're in is year two of three, effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I think you do. I think you know year three. There's there's loads of stuff that you would change for year one and year two. <laughs> um, you know there's there's stuff that you won't change as well. But it's like anything in life. You you, you learn for the stuff that you probably didn't do right. Um, and and then that'll change set you up in a better state for for the following year. Yeah, it's it's interesting you talked about. Um keeping a squad of players together and not rotating massively in the um, in the summer. Jack Cook and Lewis Barr, I think, are the only two remaining from the team that were relegated. So it, it, it is pretty much in its infancy, the, the squad itself. Um, is it a case where you're looking to keep the majority of, of last year's squad? Um, and would you be looking to, to release any? Is there any that wouldn't be um, offered new deals, do you think? Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go down that road with, with players that you know might not be getting offered or or haven't been offered or, or, or people that we don't want to keep or that that's not fair. Yeah. Um, so I'm not gonna go down that road, but you know the 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 majority squad for last year that that will make up the core. <laughs> it will make up the core, um, and then obviously we're we're looking to add to that, um, you know. Lewis Allen's going to be in his, his final year, yeah, a two-year deal, where the rest of them are just starting a two-year deal. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So 
getting getting a, a squad together and you've got wee bits and bobs that you'll have to do. Um, but on a whole, you know, the, the majority or the core of the squad will be signed. So you mentioned around two-year deals. It's not very common at our sort of level. Um, and definitely hasn't been when we've been sort of in, in League Two uh, in the past. What's been the logic behind that? Is it a case of trying to attract players by offering the longer deals or, or how's that been worked out? Like I just kind of explained there, it, it's, it's for the security of the, of the club, really. Um, and the security of the players, it's the... the the trust and the confidence that we have in these players that that these players can take the club forward, um, and and that's that's really the you know the, the be all and end all. They're, they're good football players, and we'd like to keep them here. Um, and then we, we add round that, you know, you got you got a decent a decent core at a decent age. Um, all the all the guys that are signed to your deals, are, they're all good ages. <laughs> so, you know, you're you're. For, for a better term, you know, you, you, you're maybe getting them when they're coming to their, their peak years, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, you, and you've signed that two year deal to, to keep them here. So it's a bit of security for everybody. That, that's the reason. Um, unprecedented times, you know, yeah. the, the player might player like might like the deal that that they've got, and they realise that that deal might not be here next year because you know it's unpredictable. And um, everybody, I, I, I can't see many clubs. From low and league down, who will have a bigger budget than than they're working with this year? You know, I mean, I, I think there'll be the odd couple that might throw masses of money at it, and and hopefully it sticks. But the majority of clubs will have less money, um. So the, the players are obviously recognising that and thinking, well, you know, I've got a decent deal. I'm willing to stay for two years, get that bit of security. And that's where we are. Yeah. No good stuff. Um, you mentioned uh, adding around it, adding more players around it. Um, is there the plans for future recruitment? Do you, have you got players in mind? Are you, are you talking to anyone at the moment? Obviously, you don't give their names, but um, is that that's something that you've you've been involved in? Yeah, yeah. Um, we we've kind of decided on a on a formation that we're going to we're going to work with. Um, so we know where the holes are within the squad, what type of players we need to fill the holes, mm-hmm. and then we actively go out and, and look. Right. Um, there are players who within our squad who have had deal offers. Mm-hmm. Um, they've chose not to not to sign that deal. So right now that's that's still a hole that we need to have a plan B for. Right. Um, you know so. We've got to keep fingers and pies effectively, and um, and be ready for for any of the scenarios that might unravel. Mm-hmm. How much involvement do you have within deals? Do you talk to players directly? Is it Yano that normally takes a lead on that, or is it um, sort of a board level that will have that discussion? It's it's really varied. Um, you know, there's there's players that. That I have personal relationships with, probably that that I would speak to um, on behalf of Yano and I, uh, um, and obviously Yano does the same. But I, when it comes to contract offers and, and money situations, I stay out that, and that's up to the gaffer. The gaffer's got a budget that he needs to work with that, that he's agreed with the chairman and vice chairman. So that that's not my bag. Um, that's above my pay grade. So. They, they sort out all the finances between themselves um, and it's it's kind of really my job is to maybe make the first the first contact and you know and introduce Yano or you know whatever it may be mm-hmm. um, so manage but, the people aspect of it whereas the money aspect <laughs> is dealt with from Yano and um, yeah. German and, and whatnot yeah 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 Are you expecting the season to start again, do you think? Honestly, I don't. No. Nah. I can't see it. It's a lot of games to cram in, isn't it? Even if we try and get to a halfway point, I, I can't... I, I mean, Nicholas Sturgeon could come out tomorrow and say, yes, everything's back, um, grassroots and above. Um, 
up the low league, uh, up the league too. But it's, I just, I can't see it right now. I, I just, if you go, if you go to the League One and the League Two situation, they've been told in March that they've got three weeks of training. They're going to start games beginning of April, <laughs> and they're going to be tested. So, why would they let us start the foot testing? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, it just doesn't make sense. So, even if the, it gets to the beginning of, beginning of April and League One and League Two are playing, and they decide that, right, you don't have to test anymore, Lowland League can come back and, and start playing. Players are going to need two and three weeks to train. So, <laughs> you're, you're now looking at mid April to the end of April. I just, I, I, I just, I just don't find it. I actually don't find it fair on the players to ask them to do that. Yeah, so it'll be like the third preseason this season as well. Aye, aye, it's just. I think everybody's in a situation now, and certainly the, the players that that you know that I've spoke to, um, they just want an answer. You know, they, I think I, I think we're on a situation now. We can take we can take the bad news. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's been so long. Um, we could take the bad news now, and I don't think many people would be surprised, but it's just not known. Mm-hmm. The unknown that we might start in three weeks, we might we might not. So it's the unknown that's that's hard. In fact, that's what I find hard. Mm-hmm. The unknown. Not knowing what you're, you're doing sort of week to week. Not that we can do anything on a weekend anyway, but I know exactly what you mean. Um, <clears throat> you wouldn't have heard anything sort of whispers wise from the league themselves about any plans that they've got in place because I'm guessing they don't know either nah it's, I think the the, the the most recent board meeting was that the government were still seeking tests mm-hmm. um, in the, the lone league the all, teams all are funding the... that as well aren't they They're, the them clubs are having to pay for it it's not anything that's being granted by the league or anything no I'm not sure um, I, I think the women's league got a bit funding, right? Um, and I don't know. I'm, I'd be very surprised if if the SFA have not had any money for FIFA or for UEFA or um, any of the organisations COVID related. Mm-hmm. Um, where that money goes, I don't know. But you know, probably should have been filtered to every club and been able to test. And um, that's just my guess. That's that's no anything in concrete or anything I've read that's just my presumption that they would have had something yeah definitely so we've seen a couple of lads from Pollock join Albion Rovers on loan uh, I think David Cox signed there yesterday as well um, and Ryan Finney has joined Cowdenbeath on loan from Berwick um, is that just sort of game time that he was looking for or is it a case where he was looking to, to get back into league football how has that worked um, I think in Ryan's situation, um, I'm, I'm probably not speaking at a turn here, but he was probably going to move on anyway. Right. Um, he's got aspirations. He's gone back to Australia and playing. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Um, I, I had an initial conversation with him, and he was realistic enough to say that, you know, he's um, probably not going to get there in, in 2021. You know, he's realistic enough to say that. Mm. Um. So he wasn't sure about tying his cell down again for, for potentially two years that they that, that discussed. Um, and he was probably going to move on. Um, so this might be an opportunity for him to, to put himself in the window. Um, our, our thoughts on it was if we did restart, he would come back as a better player and he would be three weeks potentially training. He would be maybe had two games under his belt, so it was a it was a win win for for both of us. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the reason. Um, I noticed as well that the the BS BSC have put a couple of players on loan. Yeah. Um, and I believe that the is it the chairman or the secretary at BSC is something to do with loan league. So that probably tells its own story. <laughs> between the lines. Reading between the lines, ah, he's a, he's he's known that we're not starting, so he's putting yeah. his players out of I think um, Chris Erskine's away back at Partick as well, isn't he from yeah. Skillbride? I think we'll see more. That he think we'll see more 
league teams come we'll, in and I think we will. I think um I think there's still a day. I think any teams that that potentially could be in a playoff, mm-hmm. they have to have the players signed by the thirty first of March. All so right. You could you couldn't take somebody on loan after the thirty first of March and play them in the playoffs. Right. So the next next two or three weeks, you know, you might find a lot of people will, will move before that date and you know, maybe get their squads boosted and like it's a difficult predicament for them to be in as well because they could throw money at it in bringing players in on loan and and paying decent wages if they're at the foot of League Two, trying to keep themselves away from yeah the bottom of the league. Um, when in reality it might not be sort of have any meaning if they finish bottom. It could be that they don't go into a relegation playoff, so they've blown all that, that money. Right? Aye, there's that uh, there's that situation that could happen as well. You know, with league reconstruction. Mm-hmm. You know, the, you know, there's potentially going to be no relegation and, and teams coming up. So, aye, that that's I'd imagine that the league clubs will, will have an idea of whether it will be happening or not. League nice. two, like, like the boys at the bottom of League two, they'll have a vote. I'd imagine. Uh-huh. And, and I imagine that they'll speak to most clubs and they'll, they'll have an incline of what way everybody's voting. Uh-huh. So they'll get which a feeling from everyone else about how, which will, how they... Uh, which, yeah, which will determine whether they're going to take all these players on loan or not. Yeah. Um, maybe more so for the teams that are potentially getting in the playoffs for promotion. Yeah. You know, they, they might want to boost their squad and, and have a bigger squad and have available for you know two-legged playoffs or, or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Sure, I, I do think I do think players will move. I do think there'll be a, a, a few more players that will in league move in. Yeah, it was quite ambitious teams in that league as well, like Queens Park going full time, uh, and then Edinburgh City taking on Gary Naismith as manager. So I think it's an odd one. It's an odd one. I don't know why why James went upstairs. No, no, because he's doing a good job, wasn't he? Yeah, aye. Uh, um, they're, they're just progressing every season, aren't they? They're, they're getting better and better and they're in a position where they're competing at the top end and so I don't know. I don't know what's caused that or I remember they brought it um they brought it well he brought a Queen and the South team down, I'm sure he was manager. Um for a pre season friendly and they were excellent like. Right. Just battered with. But yeah, it is. It's a it's an interesting one. Um yeah. there's been a couple of movements. Do you see David Hopkins away to A? Did he? No, I didn't see that. No. Yeah. And uh, Gus McPherson's in at Morton. So it's all jobs for the boys, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's all the same managers that rotate in the clubs. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you, you've got to be in it with golden handshake crew and get a big task there. So do you think um, the, the league reconstruction's got legs? I do. Yeah. I think it'll happen. I think it'll happen. Um, and you know what? I, I probably goes back to to my thoughts of this season. You know, if they were to null and void this season and and reward last season as champions with a promotion, then it's probably you know the, the fairest thing to do it because Kelly missed it last year, but they could potentially get the rewards this year for a null and void season. So. I think the reconstruction will happen. Um, I think there's a lot of money being offered for the old firm, for the coach teams. Um, so, you know, I think the league teams will vote for it. Yeah. I think well, what we talked about it on uh, the last podcast when I was on with uh, Dave and Nathan, we were saying like it could be that it's a sort of necessary evil um, if that's going to open the, the trap door. Um It'll be interesting. Be interesting to see how it does play out. Obviously, time's running out. Um, yeah. And we don't even know if this season's going to finish. So I think there's a few things to work out um, before we get to that point. But Again, hopefully, that's, that's, if it's a case where there's going to be them, the four that go up, then I mean, it opens up our league uh, dramatically, I think. Uh, you've got Bonnie Rake, who you're going to expect to be up there. Um, they've had another. Fair enough, the league season hasn't been as 
as good as they've hoped, but they've had a great run in the cup again. Um, and I watched the the Dundee game, and they were brilliant. Deserved more out of it. Yeah, yeah. Even even the like say you know if if he's called Bride and and Kelly go, mm-hmm. you know you've got BSC still sitting there who who are probably sitting on a I'm not say a, a blank check book, but they'll they'll still have money sitting about for the heavy game. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what I mean. And 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 Bonnie got a good side and. Um, you know, East Dublin are a good side, and there's there's rumours going about. You know that that Spartans of Spartans have put a you know a three year business plan effectively in place, where with the budget increasing every year, and and a three year plan is to be you know competing for for league football. Mm-hmm. So you know it's it's whether two go or two don't don't go. You know the league's still going to be a hard hard league. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Very, very competitive league. So I'll get back to the, the players and we'll just finish out with um, the current playing squad. Um, how's the mood been within um, the camp itself? Obviously, you would have talked to a few of them through the contract negotiations. Is it a case where you talk as a group very often? Not really. Um, you know, the talking and... and in the group situation is probably just over WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. Um, you do feel, or I, I can feel, I can certainly notice a difference from, you know, when we stopped playing in January to to now. You know, people are worn out now. Do you know what I mean with the with the situation and yeah. the messages are, are less frequent and you know the banter and the flagons a bit more are a bit less frequent as well. Um, you know, so people are just just kind of done in with the whole situation, and but they do. I think it's by Callum Smith's birthday today, so they've all been on the they've all been on the chat wishing Callum a happy birthday, and he's had a he's had a slaughter in the day a wee bit. Um, I'm not sure if him and Dad Smith are in the same class at school, but uh, anyway, so there is there's, there's still a bit of chat going on and. Um, you know, you get your individual messages for players and Snapchats and whatever. So, ah, it's good to keep in touch with them still. Have you still been keeping them to a, a training plan, or have you sort of just trusted them to sort of look after themselves? More, more the second. Mm-hmm. Um, trust them to look after themselves. We've, we've gave them a a guideline. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think Mac. But, had something from Sweden, didn't he? He set them. Yeah, a, um, yeah. He set them a regime initially. Yeah. So they, they had a guideline. Um, I, I keep thinking back to you know when I played and running the roads or running the streets once a week's fine because you're training two nights and playing a game. Mm-hmm. But having to go out and run the nights, run the streets three or four nights, it must be so monotonous for them. And yeah. um, you know, I keep trying to put myself in their situation. And boys have a boys have a desire to keep fit or get fit or get fitter. Um, and you just got to kind of go with it. Mm. Like Carl Smith was saying the day he's lost half a stone, so he, you know he, he must be about eight stone now. <laughs> Big skinny streaky push. Um, so he's <laughs> he, he's it running every day. So. You know that that's his motivation is to to get out and do a bit and, and lose a bit of weight coming up to his fortieth birthday. So <laughs> he listens to this as well, you know, man. <laughs> I, I don't. Like I'll get I'll get a text message every time I've slaughtered a one where I got a text message. to you're at the order. <laughs> <laughs> Callum gets it the worst because Callum can take it. He's got the biggest shoulders. Yeah, but he dishes it out as well. To be fair, though. Ah, that's no, it. Um, you know, if he wasn't wanting to dish it out, then he, then he wouldn't get it back. But he loves it all. He loves all the, all the banter and all the to and in front. Well, happy birthday, Callum. Um, and then just finally, uh, I think we've already covered it, really. And it's it's a case of if we do get the go-ahead to start again, it's it's likely to be um, at least two or three weeks of, of pre-season. Have you spoke to anyone within league clubs that are currently going through the pre-season and what 
their sort of feedback been like? Is it is it as intense? Um, I spoke to a, a sports scientist. All right. Um, and and he was you know giving me his thoughts here, the reconditioning players that that have been out for so long, and what what he was saying was that for every week a part time player is out, mm-hmm. they need a week to train before a game. Oh wow! But because we're only training three to four hours a week, uh-huh. you know that they're needing that length of time back to recondition to stop injuries and. Um, so, you know, so effectively, if we stop playing for ten weeks in an ideal world, we should be training twice a week for ten weeks before we play a game. Well, but obviously, it's not feasible. Um, no, but but that, that's that's where we are. You know, it's it's not as if they're full time. You would get if you had a if you had a player out for for ten weeks, and you know, within full time hours, he's probably back within two or three weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, just with, the, with the, the amount of hours that you can train, but we, we're not in that situation. So, it's... I think Portugal we the benefit because they're still full time, aren't they? Yes, they're still full time in League One. Do you they think are. they'll start quicker than everyone else? Yes, I. Um, I think that I think they will. I, you know, if they're if they're getting, if they're getting, I don't know, they could be getting twenty hours a week training. Mm-hmm. You know, actually on the pitch, conditioning players, um, where another club's getting four. You know, so they're they're massively improving their chances, uh, keeping their players fit and and having less injuries. No, that's great stuff. Thank you very much for, for coming on, Kevin. No I'll get I'll get a haircut next time. <laughs> I'll find one time. Ah, uh, you see it? <laughs> you get picked up.